It has been a question that has been asked for centuries. Is it possible that given an equation and Cartesian plane that the equation can graph itself? In principles, this seems like something simple. Since equations can graph symbols and lines, they can surely graph equations, right? Well, this has proved to be something uh, more easily said than done. Jeff Tupper of the University of Toronto recently came up with new algorithms for graphing and in the process discovered an equation that graphs itself. It looks a bit like this. And although this looks complicated right now, it'll make sense in a couple of minutes. First of all, let's introduce the paper. The paper claims that it is possible to graph text and information using his new graphing algorithms. And this kind of leads to our knowledge question. To what extent can it be said that math actually shows or displays something? Well, to answer that, we'll be looking at the contents and methodology of the paper. So, to begin, Tupper talks about his approach to graphing. He be begins with an implicit equation, made of mathematical symbols and operators consisting of two variables, x and y. The goal is to be able to graph any equation with math symbols. A graphing method is quite simple. So, usually on a computer display, you will have a bunch of pixels, and each pixel is going to be within somewhere on the Cartesian plane. It is determined for every single pixel whether or not it is a solution of the graph, and if it is, it is shaded in, and if it's not, it isn't. So let's get into a bit of Tupper's background uh, for the paper, which is a lot of the fundamental math that's used as a foundation. Tupper limits his approach to graphing for well-defined and real values only. For instance, as shown right now, if we look at the graph of y equals the square root of x, you can see that their negative uh, side does not exist. So this is only for real numbers. So this is really a split in the branch of mathematics where we look at real numbers only. Additionally, Tupper also talked about Euclid's definition of lowest common multiple and greatest common divisor. And so that's kind of the foundation and the basis of the math behind it. Tupper's algorithms use an additional ambiguous pixel, and this pixel in his paper is shaded red. This shows that the algorithm is still not finished thinking about that pixel and it is not quite sure about it. Well, it's, it's not finished with it, and it is used to assess the efficiency of algorithms so that it can be refined. The graphing algorithms use interval arithmetic. What this does is it tries to represent numbers using only lower and upper bounds. And this is with the procedure uses IEE 754 floating point numbers, which are just a fancy way of saying decimals to represent any given values. For instance, pi can be represented as being between 3.0 and 4.0, but not between 4.0 and 5.0. In reality, these margins are much smaller. So from this, some algorithms were developed and refined to make the graph uh, graphing process more efficient. So the basis of Tupper's algorithm involved iteratively dividing smaller pixel sections around the real function and refining it until getting to a point where it's said to be close enough and just left. Now, there's a problem. So this method where it graphs pixels around a function lead to some overflow outside the actual zone. And especially when graphing functions such as y equals the square root of x, it actually goes into the negatives, which is not well defined. So the fix to this is adding a tracking of domain. Additionally, a uh, later refinement to the algorithm included subpixel regions, and, but it still misses some solutions that were true. So another portion was added to track continuity, and this tracked some new solutions that were more easily optimized for functions such as infinite binary trees, a bit like fractals. And from this, what Tupper discovered was this interesting equation. And this is known in mathematics as Tupper's self-referential formula, or sometimes even the everything formula. It shows every single possible permutation of 106 by 17 pixels being either shaded in or not shaded in. So in essence, it does really show everything, including itself he realized that you could encode an image with the equation. What it involves is taking a picture and then labeling every single pixel of that image with either a one or a zero and turning it into a binary number. You turn that number to base 10, you multiply by 17, and then you sub it into the equation. Essentially what happened is Tupper made a way of encoding an image. And now jumping back to Tupper's algorithms, there are a couple of problems. There's still some equations which can't be fully decided on, which is a bit controversial because it should be accounting for everything. It's not completely certain because of the nature of how graphs work on computers, which sort of leads us to our answer to our knowledge question. Everything is going to be some sort of approximation when we try to write it out or represent it graphically. Frankly, everything in math that we interpret is sort of approximate. We attribute meaning to things. So even though everything can be built upon solved deductive reasoning, as was the foundation for Tupper's algorithm, algorithm, a lot of what happens in the end is based off of our own interpretation. And that's the video. Thank you so much for watching.